Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We thank God for everything. We thank God for the opportunity to be before you today, to be able to put one or two things together for what we are going to say. Lord, I'm already in prayer mode, in case you don't know. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the word you're going to hear through your son as you have impressed it on my heart in this firing line, and I'm giving it out straight. I hope it gets to the destination. I hope it does what it's supposed to do. Lord, Heavenly Father, we know your word has never gone forth and returned back for it. Any heart, any mind, any soul, any body that resists this word, Lord, destroy it to ashes. Destroy it to powder. Lord, any word, any, any heart, any word from you, any word that has been received, that is going to go forth, that will go forth after this moment, Lord, that is not received in the right manner, Lord, that soul or heart or mind or organ or anything or body, Lord, reduce it, reduce it to powder, reduce it to ashes. Your word must not return back void. Lord, I stand upon your word. I am holding on to your sword of your spirit. Lord, every father, any heart that is word rich, any variations or interpretations or uh, rephrasing of your word that I present today, let it go out there. Any mind or heart that will conceive evil, that want to conceive evil and plant evil because of what they have heard today. Lord, let that heart not live to tell that story they are conceiving because you have sent me on a mission and that mission must be accomplished. It's going to be accomplished inside your word because I live right now inside your word. Your word is all about me. Your word is around me. Your word is keeping me. Your word is sustaining me. Any tongue that is raised up from any corner, be it family, be it friend, be it neighbor, be it government, be any service provider, be any partner, any contractor, that is raised against me, that is not in line with your word, that is not done out of love, out of agape love, that I have dealt with all humans. Lord, use your fire to refine that body so that any good, any evil that is in that body is reduced to ashes and powder. If there's any good left, let that good stand and we'll feed on the, ground, on the good to make it bigger. Lord and Father, we command that you take absolute control of this message. Make it concise, make it brief, make it pinpointed, make it authoritative, maybe uh, powerful, make it reflective, make it efficient. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are excellent. You are excellent. You are excellent. Excellent, excellent, you are marvelous, you are marvelous, you are marvelous, 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 you are glorious. You are glorious, you are glorious, glorious, glorious. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now, the topic of our discussion today is titled um, Sanctity of Life. That is the hypocrisy of the police, the government and the society when it comes to sanctity of life by sanctity we mean how much esteem how precious do we hold life life of our own lives and the lives of others sanctity of life how esteem how precious how valuable how desirable do we hold life our own life and the life of others if you value your life you must value the life of others God says, thou shalt not kill. There are so many ways people are killed these days. There are so many ways they are destroyed with or without knowing. People, their soul and their spirit is destroyed even while their body is still there. And most of the time, some of these people, they do it deliberately. And they say, oh, I'm innocent. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. That's their problem. The thing is that once you kill a life, you kill a soul, you kill a heart, you are already liable of murder. So there are a lot of murderers out there 
they are in church, they are in different places, they are praying, they are trying to do one thing or the other, and they are surprised that God is not answering their prayer. They are in frustration, they are in poor health, one thing or the other. Things are not going well. Even when they seem they have money through crooked means or one way or another, they are still not at peace. They are living in high fence houses, they are looking for security, they are looking for dogs, they are looking for alarm, they are looking for uh, knives, guns, everything, police, everything. They still have no peace. When your life is come to a peaceful situation, you will be at peace with yourself first. Then at peace with others around you. Then it's easy to make peace with God. You have to make peace with yourself first, inside, because God is already inside of you. Make peace with the Spirit of God inside of you. Then it's easy to make peace with people around you. And then it's easy to make um, peace with God, the main God, the big God. Not the, the little one inside of us. It's still a big one, but it's the one inside of us. So you have to be, get those three levels of peace. Just like we have the three levels of our love and the three levels of heavens, three levels of hell. We'll come to that on another, day, on another topic. So this is focusing on the sanctity of life. How do police people value the lives of people they are policing? How do governments value the lives of people they are governing? How do society value the lives of people around them? How do they look? What do they consider? Do they look are useful, useless, or important? That is important to know, to be able to have a peaceful, functioning society. By the way, my name is Ademola Uswanele. I am peacemaker. That's the name and title that God has given me. I'm a high representative of Jesus Christ. So I'm here to do God's work, to do Jesus' work. To do the work of Jesus. Or you can call me a younger brother of Christ based on my role and position in the higher heavens. Thank God. It's not by my power. It's not by my grace. It's not by my uh, might. It's by the Spirit of God. And it is by grace. It is a favor. And I'm eternally grateful for it. And I'm ready to die for that grace. So if you plan one thing, oh, should we kill him? Should we not kill him? That's your problem. You just come and shoot me. Go ahead. Boop, I'm gone. I might even be more toxic, more potent, more, more powerful, dead than alive. So sometimes it might be better to keep me alive because at least you can talk to me, you can negotiate me. When I'm already, already a spirit, how are you going to find me? I'm not one of those who you can pray to. I'm not one of those you can talk to. You can only talk to Jesus or talk to the devil. How do you find me? I can do my own thing by the grace of God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So, talking about this, uh, this uh, we're going to look at, uh, based on the barriers in uh, two police officers, in the uh, uh, death of two police officers and two civilians in uh, Fredericton, uh, New Brunswick, in, in Canada, in the last couple of days ago. And they did the burial of the two officers uh, yesterday. And also, we're going to look at uh, some part of uh, some story concerning my own family in Nigeria, where there's a barrier unauthorized barrier this weekend and there's also barrier for my father-in-law being planned unauthorized because I am concerned they're doing their own thing I don't approve of what they are doing so that's why I call it unauthorized it's not being done in a proper manner it's not being done in a Christian manner it's been done haphazardly in a confused chaotic and demonic state or witch and witchcraft states I will say that anybody can come and hold me you know and also there's also remembrance supposed to be remembrance of my dad this weekend, which I cancelled by the power and the authority given to me by Jesus because it's going to be a gathering of witches and wizards, people who don't care about each other, people who hate each other, who have spent their life trying to destroy each other. What are they going to celebrate? To see how much flesh is left in each other's body? To see how much bones is left in each other's body? Or how many people they have driven nuts? How many people they have killed? How many children they have destroyed? Shameful! Shameful! I refuse to be part of that. In the past, I used to stomach all this rubbish, take part in this, take part in that, just to make peace reign, or be there just to be a neutralizer to make sure people behave themselves. Now, those witches and wizards, devils and demons that want to destroy themselves, they should go ahead. I'm happy when I see demons destroying themselves, when I see witches eating themselves up, as long as they don't touch the innocent. If they touch the anointed or the prophet of God, they will see the power of God in me. Fire will come down immediately and destroy them. Even while they are planning it. If they doubt it, they should plan. Let me know they are planning it. Give me notice and I will be there with them in the spirit or in the physical. Praise God. So, talking about uh, those items, 
uh, going quickly straight to the policing, because we may not have too much time to go into details and others, for the policing and communities, I can see with passion, with um, so much uh, effort being put into the barrier of uh, officers, uh, police officers especially, when they go down. This um, New Brunswick is a typical example. It's happened, I've seen so many parts around North America. Maybe in Europe they do the same thing too. It's good that people come together to make sure that they give fitting barrier. The only hypocrisy in the whole thing is that um, when police kill people, kill a lot of people like it's been happening these days, sometimes, maybe let's say by mistake, they didn't intend, intend to kill the person, and they kill or something goes wrong, the person dies. There is no concern. There is no respect. There is no compensation to the family of the deceased. As far as they are concerned, because they have that uniform on and that badge, they can kill anybody. And when they do that in society, I've seen it a lot, a lot of cases, I've monitored a lot of cases over the last few years in North America, Canada and US. They go to any length, any length, spend any amount of money, any amount of officers, any amount of public relations to make themselves look, oh, that person should have been killed. We are happy we killed him. Sanctity of human life. But when one policeman dies, they expect the whole world to mourn with them. Is the life of a policeman more precious than the life of this ordinary person? The policeman is supposed to protect and save the people. Even if the person is innocent, the police does not have a right to execute. Especially in societies where we say there is no death sentence. Police are sentencing people to death every day across North America. Oh, there's life imprisonment, there's chance of legal system. Police are not even allowing people to have their day in court. More cases are coming out now of cases around the U.S., maybe North America somewhat, where people have been imprisoned for a lengthy period of time, murder, death sentence, only to be found out now that these people were innocent. So I've been in life imprisonment, life, imprisonment, life sentences, and they found out that they are innocent. And then they are trying to be very nice. Oh, sweet, they're going to give the person ice cream. They're going to give him a meat pie. They're going to give him a poutine or whatever to make him happy, to make his family. When they've had him in very precarious situations, you know, for many years, maybe beaten, drugged, raped, abused, his family facing all kinds of challenges while he's gone. Maybe he's lost his mind, lost his senses several times while being in there, especially when he's innocent. So how do we appreciate and put value in the sanctity of life? To me, I think this elaborate police ceremony is good. And when civilians die too, the society and the community should be encouraged to give them a elaborate situation. Life is life. Because that, pol that innocent person dying, his son can be a police tomorrow. The police officer was given birth to by a civilian, somebody who is not a civilian. So how do you value life? It's not, it doesn't make sense. It should be changed. And even the old policing culture where police are supervised and managed by people who are completely detached from the society because they are affluent or well connected, they are in protected neighbors or suburbs. They don't know any of the vices or challenges people face in the town, you know, to survive. And they pass judgment based on their own blinded, uh, blinded uh, ideas or information from wherever they are giving their decision from. So this policing system should be changed to be such that police should be community-based. If you're going to serve in this community, you should be from that community as much as possible. Not somebody from Ontario coming, oh, he needs a job in Edmonton, they give him because we are short of police. Encourage people in the area to serve. Or have police uh, community watches that are in charge of the neighborhood. They know the good guys. They know the bad guys. They know the ugly guys. When things are going wrong, they know. Their children know. Instead of coming and shooting them, look at Toronto now, it's chaos. They are thinking of putting more guns in the street, more police, more dogs. Oh, what are you going to do? A police state? Shameful for Canada or Toronto? What do you say? Forget about that. So anyhow, in terms of uh, uh, for barriers and uh, remembrance, there's the good, bad, and the ugly side. 
the good, bad, and the ugly side. For the good side, the you have to look at the um, it's opportunity to give a final goodwill, a befitting failure to uh, allow people to know that uh, they were loved, they were going to be missed for one final time, you know. But the the bad side is that such so, so, such burial ceremonies, people use it as opportunity to promote personal, religious, political, social, and other kind of agenda. They promote it using that cover of burial ceremony. Someone to do fashion parade, someone to sell new branded products, someone to collect money from people. They do all kinds of things. And it's also a, not a good time too because people, when some people, their parents are sick in the hospital or their family member are sick, they are asking for time off from their boss to go and see the person. It is difficult. Sometimes they don't get granted. Sometimes they are afraid to ask. Or sometimes they are worried that if they ask to go and visit now, are they going to be able to ask again to go and uh, bury the person? So that should change. When people have loved ones that are sick, loved ones that are distressed, they should be allowed. Whether it's with pay or without pay, it should be with pay if possible. Provided it's not too much. They should be allowed to go and see their loved one. Because take it, take it, take it. Look at it like this. If they are in the office, there, their parents are in stroke or they are this thing, they are about dying, they are in oxygen or whatever thing they are, or they are in machine to keep them alive. How do you think they can concentrate on their job? How safe do you think it is for that kind of person to be working? Maybe they stay all night in the hospital with their relation or they stay all night talking to their relations abroad, you know, and the next day they come to work not well rested. It is not useful for the society. Some of them will not be able to concentrate. When my parents were not feeling too well, I couldn't concentrate. I spent a lot of time trying to transfer money, trying to do one thing and that pay for hospital bills. That is the truth. We should give people time to do it. You know, so because when people die or say, oh, you have buried many days, take five days, take six days to go and bury your dead. Is it still useful at that point? When they cannot see the person again, they cannot even hold their hands, they cannot even give them a kiss or hug them or pray for them. Praise God. So for people, it's a lot of human waste and time for the volume of people that go for such burials. Do we really need to have all that people see somebody into the grave? See somebody into the grave? Why? The quantity and volume of people that come that um, that come to this program. If the person's child who is alive is doing a birthday or doing a uh, party or the wife was passing or somebody is sick, will you get 10% of those people who agree to come and visit and spend time with them? No. Will you get 10% of the money spent during those calls for this burial thing, giving to them to support them, to make them happier? No. So what do we do? Are we worshipping the dead or are we worshipping those who are alive? Do we care about those who are living or do we care about those who are dead? Ask yourself. Government, ask yourself. Police, ask yourself. Society, ask yourself. My family, Swan Lele family, ask yourself. All the witches and wizards in the Swan Lele family, ask yourself. The witches and wizards in the Sege family, ask yourself. Praise God. Narakoshi Kiribababa. Narakarabakoshi Kiribaba. Koshi Kiribaba. So just quickly, briefly, just touching on some few things to run it up. Uh, life before death and life after death, which is more important? Actually, the life before death is important as the life after death. Some people may say the life before death is not that important. It's the life after death that matter. But if you don't live a good life, if you don't live a holy life, if you don't live a righteous life, if you don't know God, you are not born again, you are not saved, you don't do good, you don't do charity, you don't help each other, you don't love one another. The life after death is waste. There's no need to even try to bother. If you can burn yourself to ashes and burn, no need to go to the life after death. So the life after before death is critical because it determines how the life after death is going to be. So people pay a respect, oh, yeah, let's just give a person a befitty ferrier to send them well. If they were a demon, if your father was in a court, a bonding society, Freemasons, Lulumati, or cultic group, Alpha Sigma, whatever you call yourself, uh, Pirate Confraternity, Sea Dogs, Eye, Buccaneers, whatever group you belong to, they will go into the life they have, that is the best they can have. Because after that, it's hell. Nothing short of it. You can pour all the dollars into the grave, you can pour all the gold, pour all the olive oil, you can bring in all the popes, all the demons, pope, and all the various priests and pastors, whatever, to help them go into the grave. It's waste. You are even better if you spend all those money on charity so that those of you still alive may have, may have chance to redeem yourself before you die. 
That is life before death, life after death. After death, you are waiting for the master. Straight to hell or straight to the listen. I don't know what happens to your spirit, whether you are sleeping, you are resting, or you are wandering and roaming. For my own parents, I still communicate with them, if you want to know. I talk to them. At times, critical times, they step in. If the voice of God has not come, they step in and they give me their word, and I take it wholeheartedly. I'm not worshipping the dead. I don't have any shrine, any altar for them. I communicate with them. I communicate with God. I communicate with the devil. I communicate with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I have no problem with that. It's very essential. The channels were not very clear in the past, but now they are crystal clear. So, uh, 4K, you know what they call 4K in TV ways, like you are looking at it right in front of you. It's that clear. Thank God for everything. So moving forward, we've already gone far. Oh, sorry guys, just be patient. We're almost done. So the family matters. Uh, for my in-laws, they are planning some funeral and everything. I don't agree, I don't approve because the conduct and behavior of those members of that family towards their dad while he was alive was below human standard. Shameful and disgraceful. Even though their dad had his own coded message, he didn't take it, but that is up to God to decide for him now. For those who are alive now, if they don't straighten themselves, they may be going six feet under, even before the end of this year. Because I'm not going to sit down there and tolerate nonsense, inhuman treatment, my treatment, and people are shouting in church, they are claiming positions and doing things. They cannot love their father so that their days may be long. Somebody who does not love your father, your God, as your God, how can your days be long? How can you expect for longevity? How can you expect prosperity? How can you expect good health? He's written there, whether your father is a bad person, is a good person, love him. Whether they are even bad, it's even better so that you can even use that opportunity to grow your love, your appetite to love. So you don't have any excuse. So prepare for your own barriers. Prepare for the barrier of your children. Prepare for the barrier of your spouses. That is the truth. That is the word from God. My own family members, I told them this family, family weekend uh, program is not authorized, it's not approved. All those who have gathered, the word of God says they shall surely gather. And as they have gathered, he scattered all of them already. They will know when they have been scattered. Those of them that were present and available, they know themselves. So when they are getting the scattering, they should know. Nobody should call me. Anybody that called me, I raise the word of God right there and then, and they may drop dead. Nakushi karabako sharabakashi. A word is well known for the wise because my father growing up was a great guy, but they never allowed him to have peace. Lying, evil things, witchcraft, and all kinds of things. They frustrated the guy, made him to shout and be angry most of the time unnecessarily. By the time he realized himself, it was already too late. I stood my ground. I stood my ground till this moment. I allowed certain things to go on because I didn't want to cause conflict, but I stood my ground. I thank God for everything. Thank you, Jesus. So, the in-law matter, I mean the uncle matter, they have no business to be involved. These are the people who humiliated, tortured, abused, reduced my uncle to nothing. Killed his children. Killed his children physically and spiritually. You know, and now they are gathering to say farewell. Farewell to what? Maybe he's going there to prepare a grave for them. A grave for them. They will all go in. Go in. Maybe in the same grave where he's put in. That's what they will, they will choose as their choice of where they want to be. So that they can be with him. When he's in paradise and they are suffering, asking him for a drop of water, like um, Lazarus and the rich man. Praise God. So that is it for what we have for you today. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you for your word. This has been uh, the peacemaker, Ademola Oswanele. I love you all. I thank you for everything. Some of these things may sound hard or hot for you, but that is the truth. We have to tell you the undiluted word of God as we hear it. Anybody who is angry, they can go to the concrete outside of their house or on the road, and hit their head on it. If the concrete cannot crack it, they should keep trying until it's cracked. That is the truth. Or they should repent and come to know Christ. Come to know Jesus as he's supposed to be known. May the peace of the Lord be with you who are willing to know God. May the peace of the Lord continue to stay with you who are willing to know God. May you receive the peace of the Lord who have received God. May you continue to sustain. May you continue to be sustained by the peace of the Lord. May your love and faith and hope continue to increase as you remain steadfast in the house of the Lord. Whoever is hearing this message, as I have said, these examples category against the police, against the government, against society, against the life and death, against my family, against my in-laws, you can mirror it to your own situation. There's nothing that is unique. It's common among every family. So if you have situations in your family, you have situations against the police, pray against the police. In the past, people say pray for them. No, pray against them. They are not here for our favor until they change. When they change, we will know. Police is to serve and protect us. 
If they are hurting us and they are harming us and they are killing us, they are not serving. If they see somebody wrong, let them arrest the person. Let them use uh, Staser, rubber bullets. Arrest the person. Take the person to court. Let's know the truth. Who is supplying them the drugs? Who is supplying them the guns? Who is supplying them the pots? Who is supplying them this? Not just be executing people. And they say there is no uh, death sentence in Canada. No number of people that have been executed by the police so far this year, maybe 50, 100, I don't know. You take the count. Ask government. They have statistics. They are good at keeping these kind of records of their useless work. Ask them. They will give you the records. Freedom of Information Act. Praise God. May God be with you. I love you. I love you. Kwancha. Kwani Munye. Kwancha. Kwani Munye. That's Polish. My love. And I love you.